All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Teller Dev, Teller Community Call, June 26th. Um, yeah, didn't have one last week, so got a lot of stuff to go over. Um, yeah, I can just kind of answer a lot, but it's as a lot of you guys go, but got a lot of exciting stuff coming on. Um, and yeah, super happy. I, I was on a little vacation last week, so happy to be back. Uh, Owen from, from the new, new location. How, how are things going? Um, and what do you work on? It's going well. Um, we're, we're flying to Copenhagen for, um, decoded polka dot conference so that should be cool um and made some changes for my crime feedback from like the diva stuff can you explain you know to kind of people listening and then to the rest of the team who have no idea what you're doing uh what sort of stuff have you been making changes for for diva um diva being the the prediction marker protocol that that's using telling yeah so um they like launched on a few different chains and um they've updated their uh query id to essentially have um the pool id be bytes instead of like a unit 256 and so there's just a bunch of changes to accommodate for that um and then also just like refactoring the reporter and whatnot uh the diva reporter so it's essentially like we have a middleware contract between um, the Teller Oracle and the Diva contracts, and that helps with uh, reporters to um, claim their rewards and whatnot. So when Diva creates one of their pools, um, you report on the Teller side. Um, th you know you can use our client, and then um, you can also settle those pools um, after like the dispute period has elapsed and currently it's like using the graph to listen for new pools to report to and to also settle um, but we might want to use um, the event monitoring that we use for like the auto disputer in the future just because over the past like two weeks while i've been testing it um, the graph has like gone down like probably like three times mm -hmm. but um, but yeah so that's High level, I guess. And then what what pools are we kind of supporting natively right off the bat? Do you know? ETH USD and BTC USD. Oh. Um, and then we need to work on that other one that Vlad uh, suggested, which is, um, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about that yet, if he hasn't announced it, but. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I mean, if you saw there, it was a big weekend for prediction markets, poly market kind of took off ripple. What was it? It was on the fight, right? Or no, it was on the, um, sub. the sub <laughs> crypto found its use case. Basically people were betting whether or not, uh, mm -hmm. they would find survivors and yeah, crypto prediction markets for the win guys. Um, <laughs> So back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, in theory, any other near death events teller could be a reporter. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's exciting now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Owen. Um, all right. Tim, how's things going? Yeah. Uh, good. Um, so uh, I've been fiddling with getting teller on the snapshot front end um basically copying some existing implementations of plugins over there um and yeah so I, i've had trouble like working with the existing production front end uh n that never got sorted out then i moved on to running it locally got some help from the snapshot people to get that running locally um and so yeah i'm just trying to get that to work and so i'm hoping to get that completed today or tomorrow um right and then i'd like to move on after that to wrapping up those uh decentralized data specs tests oh yeah the registry stuff yeah and you're all done with the auto tipper stuff that works 
apparently great, right? People are using it. Yeah. Um, I saw somebody what made a TypeScript version. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. One of our uh, one of our users, yeah. Uh, they just made a, their own implementation of our auto tipping script. So got some client diversity there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they were nice enough to share it with us. So it's on the Teller GitHub. Uh, nice. Can't think of a name right now, but yeah. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, all right, Akram. Uh, I was mainly working on the uh, Telliot feeds so when I consolidated changed a lot of things um, just adding tests to that um, doing a write-up so I can get a review later uh, did the review for the diva stuff uh, I guess I actually have a question about that it's uh, more on the settling the pool side I, I figured the reporting of ETH USD and BTC they're just reading the value from the Oracle but the settling the pool side I, I mean I didn't understand what we're doing on our part for that. It's basically so the reporter can claim rewards for it. So whenever the pool is created, you're putting up collateral and then, you know, the reporter can essentially get a portion of that if they report the uh, reference value. Um, uh -huh. And then the dispute period has to elapse. And in order for them to be eligible to claim that, they have to settle the pool, which is essentially just calling like a few functions like setting the final reference value and so that's what they're doing that's what i mean by settling the pool so when they do that wow. then they claim that, i guess that's the only way to claim the reward is you have to settle it's not just who reports the ETH usd or whatever the value is yeah so like multiple people can report uh the value but then at a certain period of time mul multiple people will be eligible to settle the pool if they've reported that reference value but it's essentially like the first one who settles it. Oh, okay. Nice. Cool. Thanks. Ryan? Yeah, I was able to uh, pick back up the remaining balance on the tip table. Made a big breakthrough on the graph side. Was able to finally get that to work. Um, so now it's just a matter of cleaning up uh, the data feed repo. And then I got to update all the graphs. But the significant portion has been done, so I should be able to start tackling, getting that thing to show up. Definitely have it up by this week. Yeah, and did you see I, I closed the Pulse Chain one? Um, there was uh, somebody made a PR for the Pulse Chain fork. So, you know, we know that there's somebody called Fetch Oracle. They're making like, they're they're actually like forking our system and then relaunching it over there with their own token. And, that, and that's super cool. Um, that's fine. You're allowed to do that. But uh, somebody made a PR into our data feed about if you guys know Pulse Chain itself is a fork of the EVM. So there would be a version of the current teller at like the same teller token address, everything over there. And they wanted to see if we would support that one. And we are not supporting that one. Um, there, you know, if, if, if you guys want to go over there and report bad values and do whatever you want, feel free. It, it still works just like Teller does. But the problem is, is that the collateral token is a fork of our token. Um, so it's not actually our token and we're not pretending like we're gonna support it or give it any value. It, it doesn't have any exchange listings. If somebody it, wants to pick it up and go go for it, by all means. But it, it may have had value briefly in like, uh, yeah. you know, look, L LP pools on, you know, forked Uniswap or whatever, uh, that where you could have traded it for the native token in the theory. But if that was the case, when the right when the chain forked, it is not the case anymore. There's no liquidity for for on any DEX on Pulse Chain for TRV. It's all it's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, just purely be careful over there if you're over there. <laughs> if you don't if you know what you're doing and you're gonna have some fun with it, by all means loop yeah. us in. It sounds like some great times to attack some shit and make some make a few extra bucks, but uh be careful if you don't know what you're doing. So Spuddy, how's things? We got uh some issues in the data specs repo late last week from Origin, which oh, yeah. is a liquid staking protocol. 
so that he asked us to come up with a couple of feeds for their OUSD token and Forge and Ether. I got the feeds working. There aren't a lot of sources that work like out of the box with the APIs that we are currently using in the client software. Are they live yet? Origin? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But this is the, this was like the origin, somebody from the origin team, like themselves. Well, I mean, are they like going to put us in as an Oracle into an existing product or is this for a new product? You know, it's for future products. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Um, they want to get feeds for their token so that other people might integrate their token in their lending. Right. Deal. Nice. What chains do you know? I don't know. Um, I was just trying to get it to work in the client. Uh, nice. So, but if, you know, if we want to really flesh those out, you know, yeah, a real magician, a real wizard might have to work on it. <laughs> and then we're, we're up and live on Filecoin, right? Filecoin USD? On Filecoin, we're reporting Phil, yeah, Filecoin okay. USD. Okay, somebody asked, they're trying to build a product over there. Okay. I don't know much, much else other than that. They wanted the Phil USD price. So, uh. Told them we were live with it, which I assumed. But... That is the only thing that we're reporting is Phil USC. Yeah. And I said, basically, if you tip that, it will be reported. If... Yeah. So super cool. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll try and find out what these projects are that are actually building on us. We just, <laughs> we try and support them. We don't actually uh, care who they are. So we've had, we've had a few, a couple of teams make pull requests and we added feeds, but we don't know a lot about the projects. Which is cool. Uh, Super cool. You know? Yeah. Throw that on chain. Um, Mike, anything? Yeah, so um, this Thursday, the 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern, we're doing a Twitter space with um, a project called Raft that we've mentioned. Okay. Raft is a another lending protocol that's a liquidity fork uh, or liquidity inspired. I don't know how they want to talk about it, but um, <laughs> they have a stable coin called R, uh, just a one digit, just a one letter. It's been growing point. really fast. Yeah. When we when they when they first reached out, I think they only had like four thousand Twitter followers or something. They've like blown up the past couple of weeks. Yeah, they have. Um, yeah, they have. Uh, and so they, uh, you know, they they're one of these liquidity forks that uses LSTs for collateral. Uh, we're going to do a Twitter space with them over at the blockchain oracle summit twitter account um we'll share inform we'll share links in our in our discord for you guys to join that um it's gonna be moderated by torgan from an auto oh, cool. chain security so he's gonna have some good questions i'm sure um i had torgan on a deep type podcast yeah, he was he's cool. for uniswap right he represented uniswap well, he didn't represent Uniswap. He just like he wrote a paper on Uniswap. So then he was like yeah. very hostile towards Uniswap. Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, he we talked about Uniswap. Yeah, he would. He represented the expert in Uniswap, not yeah. necessarily pro Uniswap, <laughs> but really smart guy. We met him a couple of times. Um, he knows us well enough to ask really tough questions. And uh, I think he's going to ask a lot of tough questions at Raft as well, too. And uh, and Tim, our our our. our our dear Tim is going to represent Teller over, uh, in, during that sort of interview. But um, yeah, so I'm going to be preparing for that uh, this week. And I'll be sure to send you guys more information about how to join uh, when that comes. Cool. Uh, yeah, that probably just about does it. Um, any questions? Yeah, questions. or. Yeah, so I'll be going back a couple of weeks since we didn't get the last week out, but uh, we got a couple of questions from my Umos and Sybil. Uh, first one is, does the team enjoy the dev, the dev calls? What do you like about them? Are the dev talks the only time the entire team meets each week? Are you all full-time employees? Do you sometimes play online games together or do something outside regular work? Uh, you guys enjoy them? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of answered in the chat that, uh, yeah, th this call is almost identical to the call we have every day. <laughs> <laughs> we just click record. We just hit record. And we answer questions. And we, yeah. This is the one where we answer questions. I don't know, man. Maybe we should spice it up a little more. I don't 
I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, things we do, uh, most of us. So as you can tell, Mike, Spuddy and I, we all work here in the office. Every once in a while, these guys have come up. Um, we, we enjoy hanging out if, if we're all in the same location. Uh, we all, I think we all play instruments. So we, we, we've jammed a few times, which is fun. Um, and then, yeah, we, we don't really play online games. Sorry. I don't, I don't do it. Does any, you, you play. Uh, I you, just play Zelda now. Play Zelda now. Yeah. That's all I do. <laughs> I play Halo a lot, but now I play Zelda. Yep. Discord now, uh, integrated like these games in the, in the, in the Discord, uh, video chats. And so, uh, we've tested those out a couple of times and, uh. We do like once a year. We do like a, a, a like a, a teller week, where we'll either virtually or in person, we'll do some, we'll play some games together. <laughs> once a year, we have fun. Yeah, once a year. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Anything else? We're all full time too. Yes, we are full time. Yeah, ex except for Dan, who's keeps Dan off. He's he's not here right now. Yeah, sometimes it feels like 24 seven. <laughs> Mami um, Mos also asked, uh, what's our opinion on tracking business models and financials? You see, he, he basically noted that um, it's a very few teams track their business models and associated financials leading them to make faulty business decisions. So have we plotted out teller metrics? Do we do data-driven decision-making? Nope. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's much more vibes and feels here. Um, in all seriousness. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we obviously have business metrics. You know, you guys can see how much we spend. We, we pull everything from our multi-stick on, on there. Um, you know, we, we try and make some, some good decisions. It's super hard in this space to... Um, because you know you you basically you guys know how our profit works like we we get we get 10 percent of the the token min or the original we you know we, we get this dev share every month um and so if the price of the token goes up and the utility and then then we make more money every month um if the utility of the token hopefully via people using it and tipping and staking goes up then theoretically the price should go up um in practice, though, this is this is crypto. Nothing really works like that. It's you know ninety something percent speculation for our token, for ETH, for anything. Um, so you're sort of subject to the market at all as a whole, and you try and just insulate yourself from a lot of these market fluctuations. I mean, you guys have seen how you know we're doing better now than ever as far as actual usage, and tipping, and you know people are coming to us all the time, like way way more often than they were back two years ago when we were at our all-time high there was like nobody but it's just uh it's it's a lot of hope and speculation so what you try and do is um you know you try and plan out the future you try and make your best guesses based on you can't really use data you know what's what's the next bull market going to look like when's it going to be it's you can't really use data on that um you know what's are, are we should we stay on ethereum should is it going to come from other l1s which you know where should we go on the tech side like that's you can't use data for any of that it's, it's much more we're not i mean our customers aren't providing our profit so like oh, no. there's no conversion data that really makes sense for for what we're doing i think in a nutshell it's really about how we manage our time our dev time and where we focus yeah staying nimble and um and reactive with with uh where the space is moving yeah well that helps it's uh, it's much more like uh, you know managing like if if tellers is public good and we have this source of funding that fluctuates but it kind of always comes in it just sort of um, it's a different world to, to manage that model versus a, a, a like an actual proper business. It's a, it's a great segue into Sybil's questions that are next. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he he basically he asked. I just want to know what you guys think. What's the best option for funding this project? Selling the native token all the time, getting funds from VC. What's more sustainable? He, and he was talking. This guy was. This is. Uh, he was new, interested in Teller for the first time, which is awesome. And he's just wondering why uh, no VC funding, like no like, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. 
she's asking a lot about that. Yeah, so like we we could do VC funding, um, but a lot of times like VC funding is more or less extractive. You know, like you don't, if a team has a big pile of VC funding, it, it's basically like they give you a whole bunch of money up front and they want a return on this. So basically they get a bunch of tokens now or in the yeah. future. You know, nobody cares about equity in the space. Nobody wants equity in the space. It's it's trash because, you know, we're not going to go public. So you all you want is you want these future tokens. So like we're at the point where we actually already have a really liquid token so we can almost sell it as if it's cash. So basically, like if we were to take VC money, VCs would say like, OK, you give us a whole bunch of tokens now or in the future. We could do that, but it, it's basically like, you know, would you would you you know they they would presumably want more than you could just buy them for right now <laughs> at, a, and at, a discount. at a discount so you know like we believe enough in our projects that we would rather just hold the tokens ourselves and you know maybe if we if at some point we feel that a big influx of cash now you know that would would really help then maybe we would sell off you know some tokens in the future but most yeah. projects that get that that do you know, they, they try to raise and get as much VC funding as they can get. They allocate a huge amount of their token supply to that, that they mint up front so that they can tell the VCs, you're going to get this many tokens. The teller didn't work like that. There was no ICO. Yeah. There was no token sale. It was, it was, it was worth nothing in the beginning. So it's, it's a really different kind of, uh, of emission. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's more, like basically everyone's like, oh, well, you know, if you took a bunch of VC money, a lot of times people would like this because then like, okay, the team's not selling tokens to sustain itself. And that would potentially be positive. But the, but the downside is, is like, if you take a bunch of VC money, you're giving all the VCs those tokens who are then going to dump them yeah. <laughs> as soon as they possibly can for yeah. the profit. So, you know, it's the tokens are still getting dumped either way. Hopefully with the team, you, you know, and, and hopefully we've shown that, you know, we've been live for like what, five years now or what four years i guess years. with the token mm -hmm. um you know we're, we, we're sort of in this for the long term and that's why we structured it with that dev share so his other question was uh why don't we put the names of our users on the website that was his other question. or her or her yeah it's simple it's, it's, it's all the same person <laughs> uh no it's it's you you don't we don't want to say that anybody is legit because we don't know, um, we we don't want mm -hmm. we don't want to give the impression like whether we go on these Twitter spaces or we do these podcasts or even have people on the dev call. Um, please don't take that as investment advice or <laughs> you know anything of the sort. Like we in the past, lots and like many many times, people have used Teller and then rubbed all of their users. Um, so the last thing we want is basically you guys to get rubbed. So. You know, we talk more about Liquidy or Ampleforth or Reflexor because they 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 seem you know like they're very much less likely to, to rock their users at this point. But especially whenever you have a new user who comes on and they you know we we heard about them two three months ago. It's you know we we don't have a whole lot of faith in mm -hmm. the space. Uh, so yeah, but that would be why. Um, and then it's. I mean, we also just we made a decision very early on that like we weren't going to try to like compete with Chainlink or, or or similar projects in terms of how how they did marketing um just because yeah. it, it was distasteful to us at the time because a lot of it wasn't real and we didn't want to play those games and even if we try to play those games we couldn't play those games as good as they did so we sort of focused on creating a, uh, a strategy that made sense to us that we could um stick with and so it's kind of like a lesser less is more situation where we focused on the tech and it's worked for us and we're sort of sticking with it. That ninja is just more from uh, <laughs> Anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, what are the use cases for Teller? Backup and services where speed is not important, like executing smart contracts, uh, like insurance. I think for success, Teller education is key talking to teams and projects as much as possible all the time so they understand the Oracle problem and how Teller tries to solve it. Uh, the next so one, I guess, next one is a question. That's good. 
<laughs> yeah, he kind of answered it himself. But I, yeah. I don't know. Are there any other use cases that we wanted to? I think we've talked a lot about the cross chain stuff. Um, you know, price feeds, obviously, um, giant problem. You know, people have talked to uh, putting real world assets on. Um, you know, eventually that that sort of thing might happen. Um, but yeah. I think there's plenty of usage in, in those. Uh, if I'm a DeFi project and I need ETHUSD from Teller, um, I can just grab it for free. Uh, would it be possible to make a system where everybody using ETHUSD could, would have to tip? not the way our contracts are structured now <laughs> well, not the way any contracts are structured so it's super super hard to keep that a private on ethereum or any public evm so like you can't you can't say like you know if, if you have a variable in your smart contract and it's set you know like in order to read it you have to pay a token or something like that well like the the big problem is is like that that's actually at a specific storage slot so you you just use assembly and go read that storage slot like you know, so it, it like, it gets, you, there's ways just around it in, in general um, that, that people have known about. And this is why very, you know, you, you can add it in, you know, Maker has it, just basically it makes it slightly harder, but um, it's not, it's not very difficult to get around. So I'm guessing if it started getting extractive in, in any way, shape or form, people would just get around it. So I, we, we just... We tried to be honest and just say don't don't add unnecessary complexity. Try and build a business model other ways. Next one is did Tally leave the team? Tally did. Tally took off. So you guys can go reach out to him. Tell him he tell him you miss him. <laughs> you do miss Tally. So um Did Tally ask that? Nope. <laughs> Cloudy did. Our friend Cloudy, who's uh, oh, quite the lurker in our Discord. <laughs> uh, so next is another Mui Moose question that I'm having a hard time digesting. Um, it was it was also it was another one about sharing tips. There were the burden of tipping between uh, projects. Um, Uh, he's talking about uh, having a data feed where you can actually customize how many reporters need to report or how much the stake is. Definitely in the works. Yeah. Your eyes open. And then after that, uh, he was asking about um, internet computer. <laughs> uh, You're probably the expert here there. I am not. <laughs> uh, he was looking into internet computer and they... Uh, claim to be able to do more computation on chain. Um, and in a smart contract, you could they, there, you could have a uh, Oracle that works via smart contract. Sure. But can't you do that on Ethereum too? Or no? Okay. But I mean, we can do off-chain computation. You know, I, I don't know if that's necessarily what I was talking about. Like you could have Teller do off-chain computation. Um, people have talked a lot about a use case for that as oracles. Like, you know, you could post some really large math equation in solidity, and then Teller goes and calculates it with external data. And that could happen. But um, but yeah, don't, don't, I don't know. ICP. I, ICP, ICP smart contracts can directly connect to Web2 APIs, making oracles obsolete. I, I don't know how ICP works. No. Um, the way I see, I think ICP works is they um, they kind of run the chain, like the ICP uh, company kind of runs the chain. So they, I mean, yeah. If, well, if, I mean, what's your thoughts on Definity? Uh, that's ICP, right? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, they've been around forever. Like, they're... I don't know. We met them in Denver, and they were awesome. Uh, you know, cool people to talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, but we never. If we followed up with them, I don't know what happened with that. Like, uh, you know, communication kind of fell off, maybe. But uh, yeah, maybe it'll come around. You know, like usually when we decide what chains we're going to go to, it's based on 
is there going to be a user there that's going to use Teller or not? Um, and right now, there's a lot of work to be done where we're like working, you know, with developers that want to use the Oracle. Uh, so, uh, you know, adding more to the plate where there might not necessarily be a user consuming the data doesn't make sense. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Ryan, anything else? All right. That's it. Yeah. Um, we well, yeah, last note. If you guys will be out in Copenhagen, Brenda Owen will be out there um, talking about what we're building over on Polkadot. Um, and then, and then, yeah, and then we'll be in Paris in like a few weeks too. So, so I think it'll be Brenda again. So, <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it, guys. And yeah, talk to you next week.